Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over something quite simple but quite useful, and that is making an object follow a spline path, as you can see here. So, you might want something to follow a very specific path, and to do that, you can use a spline to draw out and lay that path and have something follow it, as you can see here. Now, as it reaches this point, you'll notice it kind of snaps back a little bit. That's because that's the start and end of my spline, and I've just placed it there to loop it. All I probably need to do is just be a bit more fiddly with where I place it so it goes back a bit and you probably also won't have it looping it like this it might be going through different places so you probably won't notice on your game but if you do want it like that all you do is just be a bit more careful with how you're placing it I just did it a bit quickly for the purpose of the video so this is what we're going to be going over and creating today again I'll show you that little thing there all I do is just need to move it a bit well the actual point like this so this is what we're going up today, you can draw out this spline and have an object of any kind move along it at any speed that you like. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create the spline in which we can draw out a path for this cube or your object to be following along. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to blueprint class and create an actor. And I'm going to name this spline path BP as that makes sense for me, but you can name this one if you want. So it could maybe be patrol path or road if this is for a car, really anything that you want. So I'm then gonna press enter and open that up straight away. That's a bit small, so let's make that bigger. And all we need to add in here is a component for this being a spline. That is all we need to do. Now, obviously, if you want this to be a road, you can actually add a road static mesh on here and you can have it so when you increase the size of the spline, the road will be placed manually as well. And that's also very useful for if you want it to curve, you just curve the spline, it will also curve the road. So making a big road network and system, splines is a great way to do that. And if you want me to create a video on that, then let me know in the comments down below and I can do that. But at the moment, we're not gonna customize the looks of it. So this is gonna be fine for me. We do not need to do anything else in here. So I'm gonna close that like so. Then we want to create the object which is actually going to be following this path. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm just going to name mine cube BP as I don't have anything else to actually follow it. Uh, a cube is just good for me. It's nice and simple just to test this out. So I'm also going to open that up straight away like so. Then add in a cube, if that makes sense. Again, use whatever you want. So it could be a car if you're using a road. And once it's in here, we do want to change this a bit. So you'll notice it's just gonna be in the dead center as it normally would. We want to actually raise this up a bit so the bottom of the object is gonna be kind of in the middle here. So essentially this grid, the floor of the actor, we want the base of our object to be on the floor. So if we compile, save, and minimize this, when we drag it into the level, you'll notice it is now placed completely on the floor like so, whereas it would be like this normally if we kept it in the middle, but now it's like this. So that's just good, so it does then actually float along the floor, not halfway through. So obviously do that for your object, for how it looks best for you. Then we'll open up our blueprint again and go over to the event graph. Here I'm going to delete event act begin overlap and event tick, however we are going to use event begin play. What we're going to do is get actor of class, just the singular actor, not all. Get actor of class, with this being our spline path BP which we just created and we're going to right click this promote it to a variable and name this spline ref for spline reference like so so now we have easy access to the spline that we're going to place down inside of our level we'll compile and save that just so we do have the updated variable now if we scroll down under here right click and add a custom event this is actually going to be moving the object so I'm going to name this simply move object as that makes the most sense for me not move object, move object. Now this is where we're going to do the majority of the code. Now if you've watched my videos on doing most things where I'm moving things, for example opening a door, you'll notice that I commonly use timelines. Now timelines are a great way to just really smoothly move things from point A to point B and that's essentially what we're doing. We're going from point A, the start of the path, to point B, the end of the path. So what I also want to do is make it so we can really determine the length of this timeline without having to change it every single time. So I've made a video on this separately, but I'm gonna go over it here as well. We're gonna create a variable and name this time to complete. And if you really want to get a particular, you can write in brackets in seconds, just so you remember. And I'm gonna change this from a Boolean to a float. 
compile and save and what we can do actually is also make this instance editable so we can change it for every single cube or every single object for you you don't need to do that but I've just thought of it now while making this we're going to drag this in so we're going to get time to complete in seconds then we're going to right click and get a float divided by a float with the time to complete goes into the bottom value and the top value will be 1 so it's 1 divided by our time to complete if we compile this we can actually set a default value for this so I'm going to set it to 5 seconds so it will take 5 seconds to complete so we have 1 divided by 5 which is obviously 0 0.2 and that is going to go into the play rate of the timeline we're about to create in a minute so the timeline will play at a rate of 0 0.2 which will then take 5 seconds this will make more sense in a second so let's add that timeline we're going to right click and add timeline down at the bottom here and I'm going to name this one move object T for timeline and before doing anything else with this what I'm going to do is in the components list in the bottom left here under variables I'm going to drag in my move object T for the timeline there get that and out of this I'm going to set the play rate which is what I just mentioned a second ago this is going to go into the move object here and the new rate will go into the divide there so again 1 divided by the time to complete is the play rate for our timeline so the timeline then plays however long we want it to here so again you can now change this for every single instance of the cube but it just makes it a lot easier from having to create multiple variations of this blueprint and changing the actual timeline here so the set play rate is going to go into the play of the move object t like so or the play of our timeline and we're going to double click our timeline to open this up set the length to one now and that is very important if you don't set it to one this here will not work it needs to be one second so that we can accurately change the time to complete and we're also going to add a float track in here i'm just going to name this one move track like so we're going to add a key to curve float so right click add key with a time of zero value of zero so it's all the way at the beginning then right click add key with a time of one and a value of one so it's all the way at the end and we're going to press these buttons to zoom to fit so we just have a nice straight line here now what you can do is you can right click on these keyframes and change them to be auto just so you have a little bit of a nicer curve like this and if you want it to be even nicer you can add another key and just really move this to where you want and kind of just auto it again just change how this looks so you can really mess about with the timeline here to get it different so the speed is going to change a little bit so again you can just move these where you want to just really get it to be completely different speed so the speed here is just going to constantly change it'll be a bit random so obviously you might not want to do that but that's just showing that you can change how this looks so you can get a, a nice smooth curve or just a straight or change it to make it go up and down if you wanted I'm just going to keep it like this though nice and simple what we also want to do is tick loop and you can tick autoplay but because we have this here we want this to fire off first so I'm not going to so I'm just going to take a loop we'll compile save and I'm going to close the timeline there like so so now we have our timeline which is going to be the value of where we're going on the spline so we want to use this value to actually find the location of where that spline is so that's actually quite simple what we're going to do is get our spline reference so get spline ref here out of this we're going to get the spline scroll all the way down to the bottom and we have it here this is just the spline we added in so if you change the name of it search for the name you changed it to so get spline then I'm just going to move it down and out of this we're going to get spline length so you can then change this to be however long you want and it will always work dynamically for the correct length of the spline so we've got it like this now this is going to go into a lerp so we can go out the return value and get a lerp float and this is going to be b not a so what a lerp does is again I've mentioned in a few of my other videos is it basically smoothly goes from point a here to point b here via this alpha so it's kind of like a timeline ignore this timeline up here this is something different kind of like a numbers timeline you've got the start you've got the beginning and the alpha is kind of like the key or the point on where you are in the timeline and this timeline up here is going to be that alpha so that is the actual point of where you are so i hope that makes sense i do have a video going over in more detail what a lerp actually is if that's something you think you'd find useful so a is just going to remain at zero so that's going to be the beginning of the spline so zero 
and B, the end of the spline is gonna be the total length, so it could be 100 or whatever it actually is for you. And if you want it to go backwards, all you do is just swap B and A around. So A is the end, B is zero. So obviously do that, or you could just do multiply the track by float, multiply by minus one to inverse it and put that in the alpha. However, I just want this to be a normal track going forwards. So then this return value here is the location that we currently are on the spline. So it's the distance from the beginning of the spline that we currently are. So we want to use this to set the location. So we're going to come out of update of the timeline and set the actor transform will do. Uh, let's do set actor transform at the bottom there. Now we want to right click this new transform and split the structure pin. And the location and rotation is what we want to mess with. You can do scale as well if you wanted. I'm not going to mess about with it, but I did the transform just in case you do want to do that. So now how do we get this float into a vector to actually find out the proper location? Because you've got to remember this retality at the moment is distance, but we want location. Luckily, there's a very useful node already made for us. So we can get our spline ref, drag out this, get spline just like we did earlier. So you could have copied and pasted that actually. Then what we're going to do is drag out spline and get location, if I could spell that correctly, let get location at distance along spline. Like I say, it's already nice and easily done for us. So we can input the distance, which is the return value here, the coordinate space being world, as these aren't in the same blueprint, so we want it to be the world location. And this return value, go into the new transform location, and that is now going to actually set the proper location of where the distance is on the spline. So again, it's gonna be moving along the spline, getting that distance and updating the actual location of our cube to be the location of the spline. So I'm gonna move this out a little bit to give us a bit more room. And now, luckily, we can do something very, very similar for the rotation. So I'm gonna drag out our spline again and get rotation at distance along spline. Pretty much the same thing, but just for the rotation instead of location. And I'm gonna move that up a bit, move these across. And again, the distance is the return value there, like so. And actually, I'll move these down. That doesn't look as good. So this is what we've now got, and this is all we need to do. So I'll go through it again. When we tell it to move the object, it's gonna set the current play rate so it's gonna complete it in this amount of seconds which we've set, which will then start the timeline, which is looping, so this will constantly do it throughout the entire game. And that's essentially gonna be going along the spline path, updating the location and rotation of our object along the spline as it goes along. So we can compile, save, minimize this, and now let's actually put in our path. So I'll delete the cube for the second, and put in our spline path. So I'm gonna start it here, and now the way to use splines is you need to try and select this end of the spline here, so you can just click it like so. Then if you hold down left alt and drag with left mouse button, you're gonna create a new spline point and gonna draw it out like this. And so you can move it about here, then you can drag another one out, then another one. Then what I'm gonna do is drag another one here, rotate it and move it. So we're gonna have a nice bend and a nice curve like so. Then I'm gonna move it out again and do the same thing. So I'm gonna move it down here and rotate it just so it's got a nice curve to it instead of it being an instant snapping point. And then bring some more down. And I'm really just gonna make this basically a very simple loop. So I think something like that is gonna be good for me. It's a very, very simple loop. As you can see, if I select it again, it's just gonna be going around like this. You'll probably want to make this look a lot nicer for you and have it doing something proper. Like again, a road system, I'm gonna keep using that example because it's a good one. This would then work perfectly. Again, this here really doesn't look that good, but I'm just doing something nice and quick and simple. So now all we need to do is drag in our cube, just place it near the beginning like so. And you can change the time to complete here again, but we've already set the default value to five. Now, if we were to simulate and go full screen Alt P, you'll see nothing has actually happened. So I already know what was wrong. We actually forgot to call the function. So let's open up our QBP again. Back to event begin play, we need to actually call the move object custom event we created. Something so simple, but I somehow forget it all the time. Uh, so let's compile, save, and try this again. So let's go full screen Alt P, and there we go, you can now see it's moving along. Now that's actually going quite quick, but that's just because it's taking five seconds to go along the whole thing. And you'll notice at the beginning and end, it's slower than it is at the rest. 
that is because I had it curving near the beginning and end so it's kind of speeding up and speeding down as it starts and ends which again would look good for a car so it's not just instantly going 50 mile an hour it's speeding up and slowing down which I think looks a lot better and you'll notice at the very beginning as well really because of how slow I've got it going you can't notice that it's snapping so I think this looks great so I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do what we've done is we've set it up so we have an object now moving along a spine path which we have set up and again if you want me to advance upon this even further I can in further videos if you want so let me know in the comments down below and that can include actually adding a road mesh to the spine changing the cube into a car making it so we can have multiple instances of this in the level so we can have multiple different road networks all working so again let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you want to see but again in today's video what we've got is just on a simple object following a simple spine path so thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.